I had never stopped thinking about the ideal car. All I had to do was construct a plan to build it. Ferruccio Lamborghini. In the summer of 1962, the owner of several tractor manufacturing plants acquired one of the best cars in the world but was dissatisfied with the purchase due to its poor clutch performance. The angry and frustrated Italian went straight to the creator of this car. He simply wanted to express his dissatisfaction and offer ideas for improving the parts. But in response, he was told to continue dealing with tractors and not meddle with his advice in the realm of creating the fastest cars. Most such stories end in a trivial argument and a few lines in the complaints book, but for our main character, this episode marked the beginning of a new era in the world of cars and their enthusiasts. This is the story of the boldest supercar startup in the world. Lamborghini is about passion, luxury, speed, dynamics and aesthetics. A company known worldwide for producing fast, beautiful and expensive cars. It's a brand whose founder transformed from a farmer's son who tinkered with tractors into the creator of a legendary car, challenging none other than Enzo Ferrari himself. This is the story of Lamborghini. Born under the Taurus sign. Ferruccio Lamborghini was born on April 28, 1916, in the small town of Santo, northern Italy. He came from a family of farmers who were overjoyed with their firstborn son. The kid was strong, so his parents hoped he would grow up to work on the family farm. However, Ferruccio had different plans. From a young age, he was fascinated by machinery and had no interest in the family's farming traditions. He defied his family's expectations and enrolled in an engineering college near Bologna to study agricultural machinery. But his plans were disrupted by World War II. Lamborghini ended up on the front lines as a mechanic on the island of Rhodes, where he repaired military vehicles. In 1943, the German army captured Rhodes, and Ferruccio became a prisoner of war. Surprisingly, the Germans recognized his talents as a mechanic and allowed him to open his own auto repair shop on the island. This was a turning point in his life, as he honed his technical skills, becoming highly knowledgeable about cars. After the war in 1946, Ferruccio returned home to Italy. He was full of energy and brimming with ideas. Farmers needed affordable and reliable machinery, especially in the challenging post-war period. Ferruccio noticed piles of discarded military equipment scattered around and had a bold idea. He thought, what if I could repurpose this surplus metal, buy car parts from departing American soldiers and manufacture machinery that would help local farmers quickly work their fields? On February 3, 1948, Ferruccio successfully built his own tractor, called the Carioca. The tractor he created for his father became a sensation among local farmers. Soon a line formed of people eager to get one just like it. To meet the growing demand, he hired more workers and by the end of the year he had sold 11 similar tractors. As more orders poured in, Ferruccio made a significant decision. He mortgaged all his assets, including the family farm, and secured a bank loan of 10 million lire, roughly equivalent to $48,000 at the time. He used this capital to purchase a thousand engines from the British company Morris and expanded his workforce. This marked the birth of Lamborghini Trattori, a major company in the agricultural machinery sector. The company adopted a distinctive emblem featuring a triangle with rays radiating outward and the letters F, L and C inscribed in its corners, symbolizing Ferruccio Lamborghini Santo. By 1950, the annual production of tractors had reached 200 and the workforce had expanded to 30 employees. This marked the beginning of what would be known as the Italian economic miracle. Lamborghini tractors were plowing fields, harvesting crops and transporting goods, contributing to the rapid recovery of the country after the war. In 1957, the company introduced its lightest tractor model, the Lamborghinetta, priced at $4,800. Within just 10 years, the company had become the largest supplier of agricultural machinery in Italy and Europe. By the late 1950s, Lamborghini operated several factories, producing 1,000 machines annually with a workforce of 400 employees. The Lamborghini name was renowned worldwide. In 1959, Ferruccio Lamborghini was eager to obtain government approval from the Italian authorities to develop and manufacture helicopters in collaboration with the company Air Lualdi. However, for unknown reasons, their prototype never took flight and the factors that hindered its construction remained a mystery. 
These early attempts to conquer the skies now adorn the Lamborghini Museum, serving as a tribute to the endeavors of a successful businessman and industrialist. The life-changing event Despite being the king of agricultural machinery, Lamborghini's true passion lay in speed. Once he modified his first purchased car, a Fiat Topolino, the smallest car in the world at the time, and entered it into his first post-war race. However, after driving 700 miles, Ferruccio lost control and crashed into the window of a restaurant. Thankfully, no one was injured in the accident. Since that day, he gave up on motorsports, but not on his love for speed. By the mid-1960s, Ferruccio Lamborghini became one of the wealthiest individuals in Italy. He could afford almost anything he desired, including luxury cars like Alfa Romero, Mercedes, Maserati, Jaguar, and even the fastest car of the time, the Ferrari 250 GDL. At various times, his garage held up to seven cars, and he chose his daily ride according to his mood. However, none of these cars truly pleased him. One seemed too noisy, another excessively bumpy, some lacked the desired performance, and almost all of them disappointed him with their low-quality interior finishing. But his biggest frustration came from Ferrari, a car that constantly experienced clutch issues. Despite frequent visits to the manufacturer's factory and regular clutch replacements, the problem remained unresolved. Finally, Lamborghini's patience ran out, and he demanded a meeting with Enzo Ferrari himself. To put it mildly, their conversation didn't go smoothly. It included insults towards Ferrari's cars and sharp remarks directed at the tractor manufacturer. For Ferruccio, it was a turning point, and at the same time, he began contemplating. If no one could create the car of his dreams, why not do it himself? Many consider the meeting between Lamborghini and Ferrari to be a legend. But who knows? Perhaps the bull would have never left the tractor for the supercar if it weren't for this event. The Golden Bull on a Black Shield In July 1963, Ferruccio Lamborghini recruited the finest designers, engineers and mechanics, many of whom had previously worked for Ferrari and Alfa Romero. He tasked them with creating a new, beautiful car equipped with the most powerful engine available. Although at the time, taxes on cars with engines exceeding four cylinders were significantly higher, Lamborghini was uncompromising in his decision to use a 12-cylinder engine, thereby emphasizing the status and power of his future car. In just four record-breaking months, they managed to prepare a prototype for the Turin Auto Show. On October 26, 1963, the public could witness something conceptually groundbreaking – the Lamborghini 350 GTV. In reality, the car was only partially complete. The engine didn't fit under the hood, so they placed it beside the car, supposedly for display purposes. To fit the body, they even packed bricks around it. Although these might be rumors, real shortcomings were evident. There were no pedals, no brake pads, and the windshield lacked wipers. Furthermore, the hastily assembled body left much to be desired. However, despite all these shortcomings, the car had the desired effect. For the next three years, everyone was talking about it at all the auto shows. Many critics believed Lamborghini's concept was doomed to fail, as a car with a design that deviated from the norms of the time seemed like folly. But this supercar found its admirers, those tired of the simplicity and predictability of automobile design from that era. The prototype of the first Lamborghini 350 GTV never hit the track. Its engine constantly overheated, requiring significant modifications to the production model. In the end, very little remains of the prototype, both in terms of appearance and functionality. However, half a year later, in the spring of 1964, the first production model of the Lamborghini 350 GT rolled off the assembly line at the new Automobili Ferruccio Lamborghini factory. The initial 350 GTs followed a 2 plus 1 seating formula, two seats in the front and one in the back. But later, the rear seat was replaced by a small shelf for belongings. Over six years, more than 800 of these cars were sold, at prices reaching $13,900, equivalent to over $100,000 today. It was on this model that the Lamborghini emblem made its first appearance. In fact, a year before their release in 1963, Ferruccio had personally designed the logo for his cars – a black and white bull against a red background. However, since Ferrari cars were also painted in red, it was decided to change the emblem's colors. In 1972, the gold ball and the black shield appeared, which underwent minor alterations over time. 
But why does this logo feature a bull? Ferruccio Lamborghini was born under the Taurus zodiac sign, and he adored bullfighting. He also believed that his character was as strong and determined as that of a bull. Hence, the famous logo with an unraged bull was born. Surpassing Ferrari The Lamborghini team mostly consisted of professionals, ardent fans of racing cars. However, Ferruccio didn't share their passion for racing and adamantly refused to work on creating racing cars. Perhaps his previous failure with Fiat, as mentioned earlier, influenced this decision. Lamborghini always stated that his goal was to create the perfect Gran Turismo car. Fast, reliable and comfortable. Despite the owner's prohibition, the team secretly worked on creating a super-fast and powerful racing car. When they were nearing the production phase, they revealed their secret to Ferruccio and convinced him to create a masterpiece that could capture the attention not only of Italian car enthusiasts, but also racing professionals worldwide. At the Autumn Auto Show in Turin in November 1965, the team could only present a chassis with a transmission and a mounted engine. The body and other details were still in development. The prototype of the racing car was named P400, but Lamborghini disliked this alphanumeric combination, and recalling the origin of the bull and his emblem, he decided to name the new masterpiece after his friend, the bull breeder Eduardo Miura. From then on, all models were given names inspired by the nicknames of bulls that participated in bullfights. In March 1966, the Lamborghini Miura created a fantastic sensation at the Geneva Motor Show. Virtually every racing star dreamt of having a Miura in their garage. Thanks to this, Ferruccio's new factory finally started running at full capacity, and all the expenses began to turn into profits. Over seven years, 764 units were sold at a price of $20,000, which, when adjusted for inflation, is approximately $190,000 per car. The Miura instantly became the fastest serial production car of its time. Today, while at top speed of 270 km per hour and going from 0 to 100 km per hour in 6 seconds might not seem mind-blowing, back in the mid-60s, even the biggest names in the car industry like Enzo Ferrari himself were pretty jealous of these numbers. Rise and Fall In 1969, Ferruccio Lamborghini was honored for his contributions to his homeland with the highest merit for labor award and the title of Cavalier del Lavoro, Knight of Labor. In the same year, Lamborghini opened a factory for hydraulic equipment called Lamborghini Oleodinamica. However, in 1969, Bolivia's president passed away, and Lamborghini had a contract with the Bolivian government to supply a large number of tractors. But the new government decided to cancel all contracts for imported machinery. As a result, 5,000 pieces of equipment sat idle in the factory waiting for new buyers. In early 1970, they managed to sell the equipment, and it seemed like the company was on the right track. Lamborghini began producing gas boilers and air conditioners at his Lamborghini Calor factory. His car, the Lamborghini Miura, was a tremendous success, but Ferruccio realized it had many drawbacks. The car was noisy, uncomfortable and incredibly hot inside due to the engine being right behind the driver. Lamborghini decided to create a brand new car that would be meticulously designed. At the 1971 Geneva Motor Show, Lamborghini unveiled a new model, the Lamborghini Contouch. The name came from a slang word used by young people expressing admiration for a stunning woman. The revolutionary design of the supercar was evident in every aspect, from its sleek body lines that left everyone at the auto show speechless, to its streamlined, aggressive front end, flat windshield and the way the roof flowed into the contours of the engine compartment lid. The stylistic concept amazed with its innovation and novelty. In total, 1999 units were produced. At the same time, Lamborghini lost another major tractor customer, South America. The number of orders decreased and the workforce was reduced. To avoid large severance payments, Ferruccio offered his workers two options – either move to the Fiat's tractor production company or transfer to another Lamborghini factory. In 1972, Ferruccio decided to sell 51% of his company's shares for $600,000 to businessman George Henry Rossetti. However, in 1973, the oil crisis erupted due to the Arab-Israeli war, causing fears of a gasoline shortage. This crisis led to the rapid decline of large gas-guzzling sports supercars. They began to be seen as frivolous luxuries and excessive resource consumption became unacceptable. Therefore, in early 1974, Lamborghini sold the remaining shares of the car factory to René Laimea. 
he decided to sell the tractor production plants to his former competitor, Same. After selling most of his business, Ferruccio decided to buy a large plot of land and enjoy the peaceful life of a winemaker. Ferruccio Lamborghini passed away at the age of 77 on February 20, 1993. Two weeks before his death, he suffered a heart attack, which proved to be fatal. The Supercar's Continued Journey after Ferruccio Lamborghini left the company in the 1970s, the brand faced many challenges. However, in 1976, Automobili Lamborghini managed to secure a contract to build the German BMW M1. They used the funds received from BMW to develop the Lamborghini Cheetah, a car that seemed promising for military purposes but fell short of expectations. By then, it was too late to salvage the BMW M1 project and the German automaker took back its business to Germany. In 1979, under new ownership, only 55 cars were produced. In 1984, Swedish businessman Patrick Memran saved the company from bankruptcy by purchasing it for $3 million. In 1986, the ill-fated Cheetah off-road vehicle was further developed into the LM004 and LM002, selling to the public and some Middle Eastern armies. Interestingly, one of these off-road vehicles was featured in the famous Fast and Furious movie franchise. In 1986, the company was unexpectedly acquired by the American brand Chrysler Corporation for $25 million. After investing $50 million in company modernization, they managed to ramp up car production, selling 470 cars and 300 marine engines in the same year. The company also started building engines for Formula One. Soon, they decided to participate in championship, despite Lamborghini's founder, who had advised against it, even though the company was known for producing high-speed cars. Unfortunately, their decision didn't yield good results. One driver, Philip Elliott, struggled to finish races, and Yannick Dalmas failed to qualify. The arrival of Eric Bernard and later Michel Alvaredo didn't change their fortunes. While Elliott managed to shine briefly, finishing sixth and earning one point in one race, many believed that Lamborghini's participation in Formula one tarnished its name and honor, leading Lamborghini to abandon any further involvement in such events. In 1990, the legendary all-wheel drive Lamborghini Diablo was born. It was more spacious, offered maximum comfort, and featured a monstrous engine under the hood, something Italian sports cars were missing. Soon, they introduced the tiny Lamborghini Gallardo, which gained worldwide popularity due to its compact size and excellent technical capabilities. The Lamborghini Reventon, produced in 2007, became one of the most expensive Lamborghinis at the time, selling at an auction for $1.6 billion. In 2011, the company delighted fans with Lamborghini Aventador. It could accelerate from 0 to 100 km per hour in just 2.9 seconds, had a top speed of 350 km per hour and reduced fuel consumption and CO2 emissions by 20% compared to its predecessors. Today, the brand is considered the best, with each model being exclusive. Italian police use Lamborghinis, and one of the Lamborghini Huracan models was personally gifted to Pope Francis. Many global celebrities choose cars with the Bull logo because it symbolizes luxury. As of 2022, Lamborghini's revenue reached a record $2.56 billion annually, selling more than 9,200 cars. Over 60 years of existence, the manufacturer has produced over 30,000 luxury cars. The largest markets for the company are the United States, China and Germany. The company claims that within five years, the world will see their first electric car. Over the next 10 years, the model range will consist of two supercars and two more versatile cars. Additionally, the company is developing synthetic fuel. What about the legendary tractors and other subsidiary companies? Tractors are now produced under a different logo, and Lamborghini Color Reclima, which specializes in heating equipment, burners, and air conditioners, continues to produce its products, although now under the brand's original logo. However, they have nothing in common with those who manufacture powerful and beautiful cars. When you buy a Lambo, you're not just purchasing a car, but also a symbol, status, mood, and even a life philosophy. As they say in one movie, you buy a Ferrari when you want to prove something, but you buy a Lamborghini when you've got nothing to prove. Which side are you on? The horse or the bull? Share your thoughts in the comments. Don't forget to like and subscribe so we can continue to provide you with excellent content.